Hello, everybody. My name is Adrian Goins. Welcome to the very first Rancher Office Hours. We're doing it at this time for EMEA, but obviously this isn't EMEA focused or central or anybody can join because, uh, well, because anybody can join. I'm using a bunch of new equipment and this is the first stream that we're doing here. So if you could join Office Hours in the Rancher Users Slack, and I should have a lower third that pops up to tell you where that is, but I'm sorry I don't. If you join Office Hours, that's where the chat's going to be happening. And if you're there, if you could just tell me if like my audio is okay and the video is okay and the stream is okay, YouTube tells me it's okay, but I don't actually trust them. So I've got it open over here. If somebody could just tell me, you know, thumbs up or if everybody could tell me thumbs up or if everybody could tell me thumbs down, that'll at least let me know that things, uh, that things are happening and that you guys can see me. All right, perfect. I'm starting to see people saying that it sounds great. I intentionally did zero promotion for this particular event because I don't want to get slammed with hundreds of people coming in and asking questions. So I really appreciate those of you who joined. <clears throat> and this is just going to be low key, friendly chat, not just with you asking questions, which is actually what this is designed for, but also me asking questions of you so that I can help define what you want from this kind of a session. A little bit of housekeeping. Uh, this is totally ad hoc and random. The only thing that I ask is that everybody be kind and nice to one another, but we've never had a problem with that in the community anyway. Uh, it's just worth saying. Um, I don't have instructions that are rolling up the screen, so periodically throughout the stream, I'll announce to people that you can join the Rancher User Slack and the Office Hours channel. If you don't have an invitation to the Rancher User Slack, you can get one from slack.rancher.io. I see people are rolling in, which is great. The way that I would like for this to work is, hey, all right, we're starting to get questions, that's cool. The way that I would like for this to work for future sessions is uh, with a combination of prepared questions and live questions. Prepared questions would be questions that you post to Stack Overflow or to the Rancher forums, and I'll collect those and answer them live. And then whatever live answer we come up with will also be posted back to Stack Overflow or the forums. And the reason that I want to do that is because the Rancher users Slack rolls off after 10,000 lines, 10,000. It, it has a very small buffer because we don't pay for it. It's the free version of Slack. Just because there's so much traffic, it would bankrupt the company if we actually paid for it. Um, so it's not a good place for retained information. The forums are a great place for that. And Stack Overflow is a great place for that. So the long-term objective for this is that we collect information, we post it back to there in answer to your questions, and then we start to build a knowledge base for the community. For today, I've collected some questions from both locations. I actually have two of these sessions. I'm doing another one this afternoon for the West Coast. That'll be at 1 p.m. Pacific. So if you want to join that as well, um, hopefully it'll have different questions. Um, so we'll answer some of that stuff today, and then I hope that for the next session, which will be in a month, we'll have a lot more questions, and, uh, and hopefully more people will join me. Because that's the other thing about today, is I am your sole presenter today, uh, which means I have to run all of the equipment and the live stream and the everything else, as well as uh, monitor questions, but I am being helped in this session by Siam. Thank you very much, Siam, for joining and helping me. If any of you would like to participate uh, as a subject matter expert or help with questions or anything, just DM me on Slack and I've got some material that I can send to you about how all of that will work. And that th thus ends my prepared speech. <laughs> <laughs> so let's jump over to Slack and let's start seeing what we've got going on over there. Let's see. So we have a question from Amit who wants to know the future of the Rancher Academy. That's a great question. The Rancher Academy, if you don't already know, is something that I built uh, in the first four months of this year with help from various other people inside of Rancher to create demos and video content. And it's a certification program for Rancher. So it's five weeks long. Well, it's designed to be five weeks long, but honestly, it's four hours of video. It's 87 units, it's 37 labs, and it's a progression from 
video instruction to demos to hands-on stuff that builds your rancher knowledge. And if you spend three to five hours a week on it, it'll take you five weeks. If you spend one week on it, you can do it in a single week. Um, at the end, you get a certificate from Rancher that says you are certified at the level one operator level to manage Rancher and Kubernetes clusters in production. The response to that since we launched it four weeks ago has been fantastic. We have over 4,000 students registered. We've issued more than 400 certificates already and you probably see them popping up on LinkedIn. I would like to see everybody go through this because it's a fantastic base level of instruction for Rancher. Uh, so Amit wants to know what's the future of the Rancher Academy. This is the first course in the Academy. I have an outline design for the CRO level two course, but I haven't started filming that yet. And then some of you probably figured out that the course material is actually for Rancher 2.3. So we also have updates planned for Rancher 2.4. You'll see that stuff rolling out over you know, upcoming months. Right now, the Academy department is still just me. So I have to balance that with the other things that I have going on in the company. Uh, but we're working on also staffing up to have more resources available to get content out there faster. But rest assured, the Rancher Academy is something that Rancher is committed to, and you will see more material um, coming out in future months. It's very helpful for me if you guys ask for more material because I take that information and I send it up the chain of command so that they can see that the demand is present. Uh, so Amit also asks, can we expect more courses and professional paid certification? You can expect more courses. Uh, the objective, like my goal for the Rancher Academy is that it's always going to be free. I want everybody to learn about Rancher and Kubernetes and I don't want there to be any barriers to you doing that. So as long as we can offer it for free, you'll get free certifications. Ah, Siam just posted the link in, in Slack. Thanks, Siam. Next question, we're running. Ah. Wow, Siam's totally on top of his game, answering questions before he can get there. So we're running three R key power clusters using Rook set for persistent storage. How would you make backups of this data? Like the Stash and Valero, we don't even know which one to choose. Okay, that's, I can answer that in two ways. Oh, first of all, I don't know everything, <laughs> which is why I hope in the future I get other people who can join. Um, both from Rancher as well as from the community. So there might be questions that you ask where I'm like, gee, I don't know, uh, I'll just record that and we'll get an answer back to you later. Um, this question though, there's two things related to backing up RKE. There's backing up etcd itself, and then there's backing up your Kubernetes content. And then actually there's also the data. If you perform a backup of etcd, that will I mean, that's really everything you need to redeploy the cluster and redeploy all of its workloads. The entire brain of your Kubernetes cluster is inside of etcd. So as long as you have a backup of that, you can build a new RKE cluster and restore that into it and you will get all of your workloads. You are still responsible for the backing up and recovery of the data of the persistent volumes themselves. Valero by itself does not back up data. Uh, it has a connection with something that starts with an R. It has a connection with another thing um, that can actually back up your persistent volumes themselves. Uh, I will make a note to get that name again. And if you actually go to my YouTube channel, um, when container ship imploded, I did a video on how to migrate from container ship to Rancher that included using Valero with this other thing to actually lift and shift all of your data and restore it into a Rancher managed Kubernetes cluster. All right, so I'm making a note to go get that. So I can't tell you whether you should choose Valero or Stash or whatever this other thing is, but I can tell you that just running backups of etcd for RKE will get your cluster in a state where you can restore it into any other RKE cluster. Amit asks if we have single handouts for the CRO level one course. Uh, every video has a handout, but he'd like one big PDF file. Okay, there is a, uh, <clears throat> there is a, there's a link at the top. For some reason, I forgot the word link. There's a link at the top for all of the labs. I can ask uh, them to create a similar thing for all the handouts. Um, 
I need scratch paper. I'm taking too many notes here. Uh, I will make a note, though, Amit, to just send you all of the handouts, because that's probably even easier. All right. Let's jump over to one of the prepared questions, and then we'll jump back over to Slack. Wow, okay. Well, I just realized that if I turn off my camera, I no longer get audio. We'll make a note to fix that next time. <laughs> so this individual uh, had going to answer live, but they came up with an answer on their own, which is different than what I was going to come up with, but I thought it would be worth talking about anyway. They've created a custom app in the Rancher catalog, and they were doing minor version increments between catalog versions, so 102, 104, but it wasn't updating in the catalog. Uh, what they figured out is that if you're running Rancher in standalone Docker container, there is a cache that you can delete, but they also figured out that they need to create larger increments in the versions. So they were able to get it with 1.1 or you know, not like 1.0.2. So if that's something that you're experiencing, there's a solution for that. I created a document. Actually, let me jump over to here really quick. Uh, there's a GitHub repo for this where I'll be putting up all of the public content for the Rancher TV series of programs. And Office Hours is just the first of those. If you come into Office Hours, though, there is instruction on how I want this show to be modeled. And this, I'm modeling this after the Kubernetes office hours, which I think is actually happening at the same time, even though I really tried to not conflict with the two of them. I'm sorry about that. Um, we are doing both of the US and the EMEA sessions on the same day today, but in the future, they'll actually be on different days. EMEA will be on the third Wednesday and the US will be on the second Wednesday. And as far as questions, I have a whole section here about how to phrase a question well so that it benefits the community at large when we answer it. And there's examples of things like, you know, why doesn't Rancher pick up changes in the catalog might be better asked as where can I see log output from the Rancher catalog refreshes to perform troubleshooting about you know, why this thing isn't working. So to that end, there was a question on Stack Overflow that I will load where somebody was having a problem with etcd. And they, they asked if anybody could troubleshoot etcd on Rancher. Um, but I've changed that into what's a good number of nodes for etcd? Because as you see here, they have four. And then a follow-on question of uh, is cluster.rke state important because they deleted it? So first of all, as somebody aptly pointed out in a comment, etcd needs quorum. So an even number of nodes well, it does very little for actual HA. As long as you have a majority of nodes that can vote, then great. But if you end up with a split brain situation and it knows that there are four nodes in the cluster and you have two of them on one side and two of them on the other, they'll never elect a leader because they can't get a majority. A majority is 50% plus one. So in a four node cluster, you would need three. In a three node cluster, you would need two. So don't build your etcd clusters with even nodes. Build them with one, which is not HA, or odd numbers greater than three. Three, five, seven, 53, whatever. You actually get diminishing returns above seven. 
Uh, so this person's problem with not being able to elect a leader is likely because they have four nodes. But they also, in, in cleaning stuff up, they deleted the cluster.rke state file. That file is super important. That contains certificate information and other data that RKE needs to build the cluster. So if you delete that, bad things happen. Uh, in the academy, when I do the intro to RKE, I say that that's actually one of the files that you need to back up and store securely. So back up your cluster.yaml file and back up cluster.rke state and back up your kubeconfig, which are the three files that RKE generates when it creates the cluster. Keep those somewhere safe because if you lose them, you'll have a really hard time dealing with the cluster. Let's jump back over to Slack and see if we have any questions over there. Yes, yes, audio, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, Christo says, are we allowed to ask competition-related questions? Uh, can you compare Rancher to Platform 9? Not here, that's not what this is for. This is to uh, provide community support for the community about Rancher and hopefully about Kubernetes as well. Um, so if you have competition questions, feel free to send me a direct message on Slack and I'm happy to talk to you about them. Hi, Carolyn, thanks for joining. Ah, uh, Fabio wants to know about Metal LB. Uh, once again, if you follow my YouTube channel, you know that I am a huge fan of Metal LB. Uh, he asks, are there any plans to integrate Metal LB as a load balancer for HA, RKE, Rancher clusters? That would help a lot in on-premises installation of Rancher. No. Um, <laughs> not for any other reason than because nobody has really asked for it. When you're presented with a situation like that, where there's a thing that you think would benefit people, even if it just benefits you, open a GitHub issue. Open a GitHub issue and request it and present your case for why it would benefit the community at large and then tell other people about it and promote your issue and get other people to come in and you know plus one and thumbs up and say, yeah, this would be great. Those are the things that rise to the top of the engineering department's attention when they're looking for things to build into Rancher. Metal LB is something that we all love, we all use it, it's a separate project and managing an integration with it right now is not something that they plan to do. It's great to deploy, great to install, relatively easy. I also have videos about how to, um, how to pull out the Rancher Nginx Ingress Controller and then deploy Metal LB and then redeploy the Nginx Ingress Controller so you get services of type load balancer. Um, but direct integration, no. It's something I would love to see. Carolyn, you don't have to cross out your high. <laughs> All right, once again, if you've joined the stream late, this is the inaugural test session for the EMEA Office Hours live stream. Uh, we'll be doing these monthly, and all of the chat is happening in the Rancher Users Slack in the Office Hours channel. Trust me, next month, I'll have this like scrolling by on the bottom of the screen so that I don't have to keep saying it. But people do join late, and... Uh, and Siam, you're amazing. Siam just posted my YouTube video about Metal LB and Nginx and Rancher into the Rancher users Slack. Let's see, scroll back here. Does Rancher also have a CI CD pipeline solution like Tekton or JX? Rancher does. Rancher has right now the Rancher pipelines. It is based off of Jenkins and it's designed for individuals or environments that don't already have some kind of CI CD system. It's not as fully featured as some of the external pipeline stuff that most people are using, but it's a great place to start if you have nothing. SDE asks about IPv6 and dual stack support, and Siam posts that there are uh, there's already an open issue for K3S to get that built in. Um, IPv6 is IPv6 is interesting. I live in South America, uh, which I didn't actually. I, I should have started the stream by telling you that we are having. Oh, it, it rained. No, it, it let up. We were having a gnarly torrential downpour with wind and trees blowing, and I was not sure that the internet was going to behave. 
Um, so if we do have streaming and buffering issues, I apologize, but things seem to be, they seem to be good. Anyway, I live in Chile. I really want IPv6. I had a, a IPv6 deployment when I had my data center in the United States, and it frustrates me that I can't get IPv6 down here. Uh, IPv6 is definitely on the radar of not just the Kubernetes community, but also Rancher, and it's something that we want to make sure is available for people. So you can add your support to issue number 284 in the K3S repository uh, to, like I said, to raise that to the attention of the team. I'm going to mute myself while I drink some coffee. One moment. All right. I just got a Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro, which I'm using for the first time today. Very cool. I would show it to you, but it's, it's down here. All right, scrolling through. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see people are saying my microphone had an issue. It got sucked inside my shirt. All right, hold on. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, that'll probably happen again. In a minute, I'll actually change into a Rancher shirt that has a slightly stiffer collar. Benoit says, Rancher set up an Amazon EC2. I created a four node cluster, one control plane, etcd, and three workers. I got Rancher to set up Kubernetes. Where is the state file for this? If I create backup snapshots from Rancher and backup to S3 and destroy the cluster and create another four node cluster, how do I restore the etcd state. And Sam, amazing. I don't, I, Sam, I'm gonna have you do the live stream next time. So the question is, if you deploy a Kubernetes cluster from Rancher, where is that cluster.rke state file? And you don't need to worry about it. The cluster.rke state file is present when you deploy RKE using the RKE binary, RKE up. If you deploy the cluster from Rancher, then from within Rancher, you can make backups and send them directly out to S3. And if that cluster gets destroyed, you can rebuild that cluster from within Rancher using those backups. So Rancher handles maintaining the cluster.rke state file and the cluster.yaml and all of that stuff for you so that you don't have to worry about it. All right, another shirt has arrived. I will, uh, I will take myself off screen, and when I come back, there will be no more audio issues. All right, new GitHub issue. Rancher, please make shirts with stiffer collars. This shirt, this is vintage. I don't even think you can get these anymore. I love this shirt. Every time I do a video with it, people are like, where can I get that shirt? I actually have another microphone. I have like the, the big shotgun mic, but I thought it would be better with a lav mic today. All right, if you just joined, Join the Rancher user Slack, the Office Hours channel. We're taking live questions there. Thank you, Carolyn. Carolyn likes my shirt. Um, and while we're waiting for more questions to roll in over there, I will jump back over to Stack Overflow and we'll see what we got going on over there.
how to publicly expose the port of a rancher hosted app. So this individual deployed an app from a Helm chart. I wonder if I can make my pip window smaller there. Or maybe drop it to a different position. Let's drop it to bottom right. Hey, there we go. Because nothing in the bottom right corner on Stack Overflow is relevant to this stream. <laughs> All right, so the app is deployed from this Helm chart and his goal is to expose the AMQP port 5672 publicly so that it's accessible via hostname colon port. Ooh. All right. I'm not super familiar with RabbitMQ. However, if 5672 is not an HTTP port, then you can just expose it as a TCP port through the Nginx ingress controller. And the way that you would do that is, let's actually jump out to I was going to build a rancher cluster and stuff to do demos with here, but I didn't think that I was going to be doing demos. So I didn't. And uh, so instead I take you to production. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I nuked that cluster. This is my production rancher environment out in DigitalOcean. And the way that I have this set up is with a DigitalOcean load balancer sitting in front of the, uh, it's actually their hosted Kubernetes service. And then the ingress controller is listening on all of the workers in the cluster. So TCP traffic comes in and it just gets sent directly through to the cluster. Um, and then Nginx actually does the layer seven load balancing. I, I refer to these as smart load balancers and dumb load balancers. A layer seven load balancer can make decisions, so it's a smart load balancer. And a layer four load balancer is just, it's just a traffic director. Uh, so since it doesn't make intelligent decisions, it's a dumb load balancer. I like to put layer four load balancers in front of the cluster so that I can manage everything on the cluster itself. If you're using the Nginx ingress controller, then It'll be hanging out over here in system, down over here. And you will have a config map called Nginx Ingress TCP. You can also have Nginx Ingress UDP if you want to do UDP load balancing, but I'm not. This allows you to punch TCP ports directly through from the controller to an, a service running internally and on any on any namespace. So I use this for MQTT, as you see here. MQTT uh, has its own TLS certificates, so I don't let the Nginx ingress controller screw around with that. Plus, it's not an HTTP protocol. Um, I just punch the ports directly through. If you want to punch RabbitMQ through um, on that specific port instead of on a high node port, then you would do this and port, punch whatever the port was, 5672, through internally. This individual I found this question interesting. The person says that they well, first of all, disclaimer, I am neither a Kubernetes expert nor a Kubernetes administrator. That's okay. That's we, we all start somewhere and well anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this question. Specifically they want to know how to log Kubernetes kubectl commands related to activities by user profiles in Splunk. And what caught my attention here is that they're using, let me zoom this in. Ah, yeah, there we go. Uh, they're using Kubernetes on-prem. There are tons of namespaces and users access pretty much every namespace. Somebody can accidentally issue kubectl delete to delete anything. My objective is, is there any way that we can trace that? This, in my opinion, is the this question is asking how to close the barn door after the horse has gotten out. So instead of doing this, my recommendation is that you, at the minimum, use role-based access control inside of Kubernetes to give people the ability to interact only with the namespaces where they have permission to do stuff. 
that is right, follow the rule of least privilege where you give people just the access that they need to do the things they need to do and nothing more. Coffee, hold on. Now this isn't specifically a rancher question, but rancher can help make this easier. If you have tons of namespaces, then you have tons of touch points where you need to change configuration. The more touch points you have, the greater the possibility for human error. Rancher, I mean, this person isn't even in the chat and isn't even in the channel, but I will you know, follow up with them afterwards and hopefully we can bring them over to the rancher side of the fence. Rancher has projects. Projects are a collection of namespaces. When you first deploy a cluster, you get two projects, default and system. Default is default and system has all of the system stuff that you shouldn't play with. But you can create other projects. Within each of those projects, you can put multiple namespaces and then your role-based access control configuration within Rancher is applied to the project and is automatically applied to every namespace underneath it. Rancher's ability to do role-based access control is outstanding. So in addition to plugging it into authentication backends, at the global level, you can build your roles for global cluster and project, and then you can apply those to multiple clusters um, and make sure that you're changing stuff in one place and those changes are propagating across all of the places where they're deployed. Let's jump back over to Slack. Is my mic better? I hope my mic is better. Let me know in the chat. Oh, wow, that freaked me out. I came back over to Slack and I'm looking at it on the preview window and I see all of the Rancher menus. And I thought my browser was like bleeding onto the Slack window, but no, it's Siam posting, <laughs> posting a screenshot. All right, Carolyn says Mike is good. That's great, thank you. Interesting, Ryan says, thanks to the YouTube algorithm for finding this stream. Uh, Ryan, tell us, what you mean by that? Did, uh, I mean, granted, as I said in the beginning, I did zero promotion for this because I, I want it low key and manageable. Um, but did you find it, did YouTube recommend this to you or, uh, or did you, tell us how you found it. Felix says, hi, I'm still rather unfamiliar with Rancher, but I managed to bootstrap an HA cluster running Rancher with the recommended three nodes serving as control plane SCDM worker. Using this instance, I built another cluster with three master nodes and two worker nodes, all on bare metal in a data center. Good job. What would be the next step to make this setup production ready? Are there eBooks or instructions on how to secure the servers? <laughs> Siam, would you please introduce Felix to the Rancher Academy? Um, production ready means something different to everybody. So you have an HA Rancher and you have an HA Kubernetes cluster. Uh, as far as securing the servers, there is the Rancher hardening guide uh, for RKE clusters. Let's see, so if you did this in bare metal and you deployed it, so if you built another cluster, so because you say that you built another cluster using the Rancher environment, it sounds like you built an RKE cluster, in which case, if you come out to the Rancher documentation, come down here and come down to security, you'll see here a number of things. One, we have hardening guide for each of the versions. So this will tell you, it's based on the CIS benchmarks for Kubernetes. So this tells you specifically what to do to harden the Kubernetes deployment on those systems. Uh, it doesn't directly address how to harden the systems themselves, but how to make sure that Kubernetes is secure. Additionally, if you're using Rancher 2.4, you can run CIS security scans from within Rancher, and you can scan your RKE clusters to make sure that they're conformant 
to the CIS benchmarks. Boris, I'm working on a fleet setup with HA K3S setup. I don't know anything about fleet uh, other than the fact that it looks amazing. It's if you could see my list of stuff that I want to work on, just even within Rancher, I really wish that I actually proposed a few months ago that I should be the guy in Rancher who knows everything about everything. And they said, great, go learn it. Um, and also do the rest of your work. <laughs> so, so I know a little bit about a few things and a lot about some things. Um, so the fleet question I'm not going to be able to answer, but I'll make a note of that. Siam's going to answer it, um, and we'll follow up with you. Oh, Ryan says this video is on a recommended list for himself. That's pretty cool. So thank you to the YouTube algorithm. Uh, you've been solo starting up a rancher cluster for a few projects. Okay, Ryan, well, welcome. Um, this is great. Uh, if you're just getting started with Rancher, check out academy.rancher.com and it'll have everything that you need to know about how to get started. Ooh, Aaron says, is there a process for getting an application listed on the Rancher catalog like there is for Helm Hub? Hmm. I will try to answer that question on the fly. If you're not familiar with the Rancher application catalog, that is... Uh, out here under apps. Rancher will deploy any application via anything that's Helm compatible. So you can add arbitrary Helm catalogs here, but it ships with two things. It ships with the global Helm repo, although that's being deprecated. Uh, it also ships with what's called the Rancher library. And the Rancher library, I love this mute button. The Rancher library, has applications, wow, okay. Adrian reveals that he's behind on his upgrades. If you launch something from Helm, you have to configure all of the key value pairs. Let's collapse this. So these are all Helm apps down here. So if I wanted to launch, yeah, whatever, Chart Museum, let's say, then I can look under the detailed descriptions section and it will give me the readme for this within which are all of these key value pairs that I can read through and I understand what they are so I can set them down here in the answers section. And this is just standard help. This is the equivalent of dash dash set. Our documentation, which I'll show you in a second, tells you how to take a standard Helm chart and add a small configuration change to it that creates a question and answer template that then gets the values substituted in uh, automatically. So if we come back up here to the library and pick, do we have Chart Museum in here? We don't. Oh, we do. Okay, perfect. So if we pick Chart Museum from the library, instead of it being key value pairs, you can see that there's a form here where you can just answer some questions. This is a lot more approachable for people who are new to Kubernetes. The library is, I like to call it a curated list of apps that we maintain the configuration for. We don't support these apps. Uh, if they have the partner flag on them, then they're supported by partners of ours. Uh, if they don't, then they're just things that we took the Helm chart and we converted it over because either we use them or a number of our customers use them or we were bored or whatever. Uh, or they were contributed by somebody in the community. What's important is that the apps in the library are maintained. So if you would like to submit an app, let's see if the instructions for doing that are out here. Creating custom catalogs, creating catalog apps.
All right, this will tell you how to create that, but it doesn't look like it says how to submit that to Rancher. So what I would recommend that you do is create your catalog app and then open a GitHub issue and, and actually you can even create a pull request if you want because this is all public. So you can open a GitHub issue um, with a PR that says, hey, I've created this and I would like to be responsible for maintaining it. And then the engineering people will review that and if it's cool, they'll merge it and then they'll have you recorded as the contact person of reference uh, where when that needs to be maintained, they'll contact you. If there's any issues with it, they'll contact you. And that's really the main thing because we're an open source company with open source products. Support is, uh, it's important that we allocate resources accordingly. So all of the free components of stuff have community support um, and we want to make sure that if there's a problem with it that we know who to go talk to about getting it fixed, at least as far as the apps go. Our support, our enterprise subscription for support, if this is something that interests any of you, uh, is actually pretty comprehensive. It includes support for the container runtime, uh, all of the Rancher components, all of the Kubernetes components, and every single CNCF app that's bundled with the product. So that means that you get support not just for Docker, Rancher, Kubernetes, K3S, RKE, but you also get support for Prometheus, Grafana, uh, Fluentbit, all of those other things that are part of the Rancher's solution. And it's a one-stop shop. If we, if there's a problem and you contact us, we'll help you troubleshoot the problem. And if we determine that it's not something that's under our umbrella for support, if it's like in upstream Kubernetes, for example, we'll take that upstream on your behalf. If they're going to take too long to fix it, but we feel it's important, we'll actually issue patches that you can apply or that our customers can apply as a stopgap measure until it gets fixed upstream. And if it has nothing to do with us or anything that's upstream, we'll empower you with enough information that you can go back to whoever is responsible for it and say, hey, here's an issue. Can you guys go fix it? It's, it's one of the best support solutions that I've ever seen. And I, in my previous life, actually ran a support organization. I built and managed a managed services provider uh, for 14 years that built and managed data centers for US media companies. Rancher support, way better than our support was. All right, back over to Slack. Let's, let's pause for a moment. And I want to, I want to ask you, the community, the 26 people who are in office hours and whatever number of you are actually watching. Does it tell me how many people are watching? It doesn't. Does it tell me over here? 29 people. Okay, so that's cool. We got 18 likes. Thank you. If you joined late, I'll tell you my objective for this again. My objective here is to help you be successful with Rancher via an open forum that builds a community knowledge base. So that's why we have prepare questions on the forums or in Stack Overflow that we'll pull in uh, and then we'll answer questions live. But the, the objective is to deliver information that lots of people can benefit from. So my question to you, if you're in the chat is, Tell me how this can most benefit you. I'm interested in your thoughts. Is it, is this format good? Is it, you know, the back and forth between Stack Overflow and the direct chat helpful? Uh, is the way that I'm answering questions, trying to make them open-ended and, and broad in scope helpful? Is it too basic? Um, so let me know that. And then the other thing that I would like to know is when I was putting together questions over the last couple of days, I realized that I'm kind of limited in what I can get access to. Like people asked questions a few hours or a couple of days ago and they have zero replies and those are the ones that I'm picking. But nobody wants to ask a question in the forum or Stack Overflow and be told, yeah, I'll answer that for you in four weeks at the next live stream session. I think that's why the Kubernetes live stream tends to favor more the live chat type of questions, but I really want, I want these to last. I want the prepared questions. So. Would it be helpful if we did something like a live session once a month and then a recorded 30 minute session once a week where just once a week, I release a 30 minute video of, hey, these are the questions that I collected in the last seven days. And that would also give me more time to collect answers to them. So I'm not having to answer things on the fly. And then once a month had an hour long session for the, the two zones uh, where we answer questions live. Let me know in the chat what you think of any of those ideas or anything else about how we might structure this to help you. Uh, 
All right, Sergio asks a question about a specific GitHub issue. Uh, that unfortunately I cannot answer live because that requires research and debugging. Uh, if you have a GitHub issue though that you feel is important and that's not getting attention, then you can certainly bump it to, to ask what's going on and you can raise it to the attention. You can, you can bring it to my attention. I have very little power inside of Rancher to get anything looked at. Uh, the best way to get to raise those in attention is get other people to say that they're also having that issue, that they're also experiencing that issue. All right, while we wait for more conversation in the chat, let's go back. And I don't want to answer all of my Stack Overflow and forum questions. in this session because then I have nothing for the next session. <laughs> we have about 13 minutes left. Huh. This question. This is another one that somebody got an answer to, but it had some interesting information that I think other people can benefit from. HTTP to HTTPS redirect. Uh, when this person opened up the question, they were asking about how to, so they created an ingress and it still received traffic on 80 and they wanted to force that to bounce to 443, which is just a redirect. But they were doing it with annotations for the Nginx ingress controller and that wasn't working. And what they figured out, uh, Morali was helping them. What they figured out is is not exactly correct. They, they said the Rancher 2.4.4 uses traffic as a load balancer. The Rancher doesn't actually use anything as a load balancer. It's the Kubernetes cluster that it's deployed into. If you deploy Rancher into an RKE cluster, by default, you get the Nginx ingress controller. But K3S uses traffic by default, and it's traffic 1.7. So instead of putting an annotation for Nginx, you have to go to Traffic's documentation and use their annotations. And the one that they figured out was redirect the entry point to HTTPS. And they also showed that they can do this directly from within the configuration uh, in the UI. They don't have to do this on the ingress within the YAML. I often forget that Traffic is the ingress controller for K3S. And in my weekly intro to Kubernetes training that I do every Thursday, uh, I actually have my ingress definition by default still has an annotation for Nginx. And every week I have to tell people, yeah, just ignore that because it is not Nginx. Um, so that's a, that's a gotcha that's important to remember. Jump back over to Slack. All right, so Aaron likes the idea of the recorded q and I think, I, I think that that's the right way to do it. I, I can't do a live stream every week. Well, maybe I can, I don't know. That might also be, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's not out of the question. This seems to be going well. So maybe we could do a live stream every week, office hours on a weekly basis. Uh, but certainly recorded would also be good. I just wanna make sure that the questions are answered. Amit says the Academy is going in the right direction. Thank you very much. And Slack is useful. The community is, the Rancher community is amazing. It's amazing. Uh, I've never belonged to any group that was so committed to everybody else's success. And this is not just within the open source community or the Slack community. This is within Rancher. Everybody within Rancher is so humble and so focused on just making Rancher and Kubernetes accessible to everybody and just making everything better. They lift each other up, they help, they stop what they're doing, they jump into calls. It's the best place I've ever worked. And again, I ran my own company and this is a better place to work than when I was my own boss. All right, I think he's asks, why the difference? Uh, why does K3S use traffic? 
I don't actually know why. I don't know if, I don't know. Uh, K3S's objective is to keep things small and lightweight. I like traffic as a load balancer. I don't know if there was you know, some decision related to Nginx being a heavier lift or requiring more moving parts or something. I have no idea. Let's see what Amit replied. K3S should be light and traffic is a perfect match for that. Okay, so there you go. K3S, while it works great in a data center environment, it is also designed for edge deployments. So, so a, an edge deployment is often a resource constrained environment. You know, we think of you know, IoT devices or like running on a Raspberry Pi, but there's, I can tell you, there are installations of K3S on fighter jets, like in the air. And I talked to a guy at one of the KubeCons um, from the Air Force about what they were doing and what their constraints were within the, the machines, the computers that are running inside these jets. And, and K3S is a perfect fit for that. Um, I don't know what the actual binary size is for the Nginx ingress controller, but we also want K3S to be something that comes up very quickly. Uh, you can get a fully functioning K3S cluster up and running in less than a minute, whereas an RKE cluster takes about 10 to pull down and deploy all of its stuff. Yeah, and Siam pointed a, to a Rancher blog article, Ingress on the Edge, showing that K3S starts in seconds, thanks to traffic as the default Ingress controller. Ah, Douglas wants to know how to get a job at Rancher. <laughs> and Sam pointed the link to the careers page. We are happy to receive CVs, or if you're, well, so this is the Emmaus session, so I can say uh, CV. But if you're joining from the US, that's a resume. Uh, we're happy to get those from anybody for anything. If you just send it over, you can send it to me, you can submit it through the careers page, uh, and just let us know what you do, what you're good at, what you wanna do. And we are always looking for good people to join the team. Manu says, how do I find a compatible version of RKE? And Siam says, if the cluster's imported, go to edit and you can see what RKE updates are available for your cluster. It's the local cluster, the one that ran Rancher itself. So you need to use RKE to upgrade that right. Uh, okay. Interesting. Let's jump over to Firefox. When you want to perform an RKE upgrade, first of all, in the interest of teaching you how to fish, let's go to the documentation. And you'll see here, you know, there's how to do the installation and then how to perform the upgrade. That was a sneeze. <laughs> I'm really digging this instant mute button that I've got over here. Each RKE version has a specific list of supported Kubernetes versions. So the first step in doing your upgrade is that you wanna go out and pull down the latest version of RKE, which you can get from github.com Rancher RKE. And here, if you go to releases, you'll see, you'll see that I, I can show draft releases because I'm an admin, but you'll see latest release. So V112. Now watch out because latest release doesn't actually mean newest release. Latest release means most recent in time. So if Rancher releases RKE 112, and then tomorrow they release an update to RKE 104 or 0 0.5 or something that might show up as the latest release. So make sure that you are actually pulling down a newer version than what you have. I don't have a terminal session up on this, but you can get that from RKE version. These are the Kubernetes versions that are supported in this particular release. Uh, we always support the latest 
patch release for the three most recent minor releases. So you see that's 115, 116, 117, and then 610 and 12 is the patch release. Pull this binary down onto your computer, and when you run the RKE command, it is capable of installing and performing upgrades to this. As far as actually how to perform an upgrade, First of all, read this whole page. Don't just do the, the small thing that I'm telling you to do here. We also cover this in the Rancher Academy in the Intro to RKE section. You change the Kubernetes version in your cluster.yaml file, and then you run RKE up. And you change this to one of the versions that's supported by your version of RKE. And when you run RKE up, it goes out and updates all the Docker containers and does all of the magical wonderfulness that RKE is known for. Oh, interesting. Ahmed asks, I, I mentioned K3S on fighter jets, and he points us to a project uh, about a DoD case study that I am unfamiliar with. Let's go look at that really quick. Uh, no, I don't think it was this. This just says that they started using Kubernetes, which is good for them. Uh, let me just say that there's K3S is running, well, Rancher and Kubernetes is running in some really cool places. Oh, yeah, but it says F16s. Okay, maybe it was. Sergio asks, when's the next course on Rancher Academy scheduled to be launched? It does not have a launch date at this moment, but it is in development. All right, we are rolling up on the end of this. Let me know in the chat if you're in the chat. First of all, if you're not in the chat, you should join the chat. Uh, let me know how this was for you. Was this helpful? Would you like to see something different? Keep it the same? I don't know. Let me know. Uh, because I want to make sure that whatever I'm producing for you is valuable. Uh, I don't want, like, I want it to be valuable for you as an individual as well as for the community at large. Yeah, Felix says, super helpful. I want a Slack integration that allows me to, like, favorite comments and then they, like, pop up in the well, I guess if you're watching the Slack stream, I don't really need them to pop up, but. All right, cool. So generally, it looks like we've got a thumbs up from everybody. I want to thank all of you for joining. This has been the inaugural EMEA office hour session. We'll be doing this at a minimum every month, possibly more frequent. If you have questions, post them in the Rancher forums. Post them on Stack Overflow and tag them with Rancher or RKE or Longhorn or K3S. Uh, I will show you again. First of all, if you join the afternoon session, it'll have a lot of stuff that I'll have changed um, so that I don't have to be like, yes, and if you go to this page, then you can uh, get whatever. Anyway, the, the Rancher Community Office Hours instructions are up here on GitHub. Um, and just find me on the Rancher user Slack and let me know, you know, if you think of something later and you say, hey, you know, maybe it could be like this or it could be like that or I really like this or whatever. Uh, I do everything I do based on feedback from all of you. So top of the hour, we are done. Thank you for joining me. If you want to come in this afternoon, it'll be at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, and we'll do it again for another hour. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you later.